Previously, we made this video. Who do you think did it better for the retro look? Nikon or Fujifilm? Now you may be wondering why is this comparison even a thing? And it seems like you guys enjoyed that. So we're gonna continue on with another video along this kind of theme. But today we're talking about the Fujifilm X-E2 and the Lumix GX80 or GX85 if you're from the US. So we're taking it way back to 2016. Which one of these cameras looks the nicest to you? Let's dive in. So firstly, let's take a look at the X-E2 by Fujifilm. Now this is 2016 we're gonna be talking about here. So this is the time era when I think Fujifilm were really pushing it forwards for the retro look and the time period where other manufacturers were realizing that this look may be something that's gonna take off in the near future which we all know it did. So taking a look over the X-E2, we can see here, it's got that very classic rangefinder kind of look. It's got all the leather feels here at the side. We've got the control buttons, which we used to with Fujifilms. And this one has a nice little added grip to it as well, which makes it quite nice. Let's turn this around. Here we have, as usual, the ports for the camera itself. They out there, what looks like a, a HDMI. And we have a micro USB and microphone port. Yeah. And the back here is where it starts to really gain its retro looks. Let's get in even closer. As you can see the aesthetics here, the back of this camera is pretty beautiful. We have here, we have playback buttons here, our drive, AE, functionality buttons, which also double up as other buttons here. We have our little control for the diopter, which is not so little, it's actually quite handy. It's a large size there for the viewfinder. Then we have various other buttons like the flash, which should pop up for us. There we are. That always reminds me of the robot from Short Circuit. So cool. Moving along, we have another a Q button there and a nice scroll wheel here with a nice indentation, kind of adds to the aesthetics. Looks like we have a microphone at the back here, or a speaker port, sorry. And then our button situation. And this one is made in Japan. One of the sought after kind of cameras. But you see the buttons here, this is a different design to what we kind of used to now in the modern Fujifilm cameras. But this leather rep finish here is actually pretty beautiful. And we kind of see this design also on the X-Pro series. So it's, it's nice to see that on an XE. The screen is completely fixed, although it looks like it could possibly come out. It's a fully fixed screen on this one. It's a really nice camera. So at the top here, once again, in Fujifilm fashion, let's just go a little bit further out. We have our compensation wheel here. We've had nice shutter speed buttons here. There's no locking mechanism as far as I know. Actually there is, so how do we do this? No, no, it's not locked, it just locks there. So unlike the other Fujis, cameras there's no button to lock in the position the release the shutter button here the, sh the trigger also has a, a thread so we can pop a little threaded trigger into that as well which is quite nice very retro of it we have a wi-fi and a function button there moving across the top it's pretty flush and there's not much other buttons just that one little side where you'll be dealing with and where you'll be looking through the viewfinder nice looking camera Okay, let's move on to the Panasonic. So here we have the Panasonic GX80 or GX85, depending on where you are in the world. You can see here, it's a little bit more modern than the Fujifilm. I guess they wanted to go for a classic aesthetic, but not really jump too far into it. I guess I was being cautious at the time to whether people would purchase it or not. But even though it's still, it's a very beautiful looking camera, very sleek. It's got a bit more of a, a Leica look to it with the harder edges, in my opinion. All right, let's take a closer look at the details of this camera. So you can see here, the lever at finish is pretty nice on this. Obviously interchangeable lenses, just how the X-E2 is. And let's move around here. On the side here, there's actually no ports. So the ports location is different on this camera. And looking at the back here, it actually looks very familiar with the Fujifilm camera, but you can actually move the screen on this one, which is quite handy. Like so. 
typical time era of that kind of tilt you move. But the way how, how flush it goes in, you would never know unless you look at this side that the screen can actually come out. Because if you look directly, it's so flush to finish away the lens, the, the actual LCD screen goes in. Really nice and flush. Right, let's take a look at some of the buttons that you get on this thing. So here we have our viewfinder. Once again, the scroll wheel here for the diopter is actually quite a large size. It's nice. You got the LVF, LVF and the FN4, which is a function button there as well. Just toggle that on and off. Uh, let's try and go here. We've got another function button, or you've got 4K capture there. We've got the flash button, which we'll press in a moment. AE lock, and another scroll wheel. So let's push that flash. Ooh, it's a bit of a, a different way of popping up. So let's have a look if this one also looks like short circuit. I know we shouldn't care, but in my opinion, that's a nicer looking flash. All right, moving along, we have that scroll we was talking about, and underneath, once again, we have that typical kind of button array, which we're kind of used to on most cameras. Um, not really at this time period, just most cameras in general kind of have this setup. I think it's just the easiest way to, to deal with the ergonomics. And if you look at the back here, there's less uh, leather rep finishing over the back of this camera. So they've gone a bit more for a metal finish here, which is quite nice, and then small dabs of, of the leather going around. And here is where we finally find our ports. If we can get to them, and we have a HDMI, and we have a charging port using USB micro. So that can pop back in. And following the camera around to the top, we can see here we have our mode, and then we have another scroll wheel, and then this one doubles up as our trigger, which is kind of a, a weird soft trigger. It doesn't, you don't really feel that you're pressing it down too much. Then we've got our record button for video, and the rest is very, very simple. This finish on the top actually reminds me of some of the Sony A6000 series. So it's got a bit of a less, it's it's less um, retro, I would say. But yeah, again, it still does have like a nice, simple finish to it. Maybe 80s kind of cameras vibes or some of the, the Leica finishes as well have a kind of finish like this on top. Nice camera. Moving around to the front. And there we have it. That's the GXA. Let's put these two cameras side by side and see how they fare. So what do you think? Out of the two, which would you choose? I know a lot of you guys on this channel do like your Fujifilm cameras. Um, I'm trying not to be biased, but there is one that I prefer, prefer out of the two. I'm not going to say anything. But they're both pretty nice looking cameras when you're looking at them side by side but as we know there is always got to be a winner so i'd like to hear in the comments who you think is the winner out of the lumix or the fujifilm for the retro aesthetics okay leave a comment catch you in the next one